the invitation hit me like a sledgehammer to the gut. My hands trembled as I read the looping cursive script. You are cordially invited to the engagement celebration of Briar Foster and Elliot Grayson. Elliot, my ex-fiancé. Briar, my own sister. I stumbled back, crumpling the embossed card in my fist as nausea washed over me. How could they? Briar knew every sordid detail of Elliot's betrayal, how he had lied and cheated throughout our relationship. She had been my shoulder to cry on when I finally mustered the courage to walk away. The doorbell chimed, jolting me from my daze. I flung open the door to find Briar standing there, a smug grin plastered across her face. Aren't you going to congratulate me, sis? I gaped at her, words failing me. Briar's grin widened as she flaunted the gaudy diamond ring. What's the matter, Ava? Cat got your tongue? How could you? I croaked, finally finding my voice. With Elliot, of all people, Briar's eyes glinted with malice. Oh, didn't he tell you? I'm pregnant. The ground seemed to shift beneath my feet. You're... What? Yeah, that's right. She placed a possessive hand on her still-flat abdomen. Elliot and I are having a baby. Looks like he chose the right sister, after all. White-hot rage blazed through me. I grabbed her arm, fighting the urge to slap that smirk off her face. You lying snake! How could you do this to me? Briar wrenched free, her expression twisting into a sneer. Maybe if you weren't such an uptight prude, Elliot wouldn't have needed to look elsewhere. The venom in her words stung like a thousand bee stings. I can't believe you, I spat. After everything he put me through, how he lied and cheated and manipulated me. Oh, get over yourself, Ava. Briar rolled her eyes. Elliot never loved you. He was just biding his time until someone better came along. Her words lanced through my heart like shards of glass. I recoiled, gasping for air as searing pain ripped through my chest. Briar sneered, reveling in my anguish. Face it, sis, you're nothing but a lonely, pathetic loser. Elliot and I are meant to be together. With those parting words, she turned and sauntered away, leaving me shattered on my doorstep. I collapsed to the ground, hot tears streaking down my cheeks as the weight of her cruelty crushed me. How could my own sister betray me like this? And with the man who had already shredded my heart to ribbons? Elliot's duplicity was like a festering wound, one I thought I had finally closed. But Briar had ripped it wide open, pouring salt into the raw, aching depths with her callous revelations. As the shock ebbed, a familiar ember of determination flickered to life within me. The same resilience that had carried me through the emotional turmoil of my broken engagement. I would not be a victim anymore. Not to Elliot's manipulation, and certainly not to my sister's vicious betrayal. Staggering to my feet, I clenched the crumpled invitation in my fist. If it was war they wanted, then war they would get. I spent a restless night tossing and turning, haunted by memories of Elliot's betrayal, Images of his lies and infidelity flickered through my mind in agonizing detail. The late nights at the office, the unexplained charges on our credit cards, the lingering scent of another woman's perfume clinging to his clothes. How could I have been so blind, so trusting? Elliot had been a master manipulator, spinning an intricate web of deception around me. His charm had disarmed me, lulling me into complacency while he carried on his affairs right under my nose. By the time I finally caught on, the damage was done. The morning light filtered through my curtains, the new day offering no respite from the shadows of the past. I dragged myself out of bed, numb and hollow, my mind still reeling from Briar's cruel revelation. Elliot never loved you. Those words echoed in my head like a death knell. The bitter truth I had always suspected but never wanted to face. Our entire relationship had been a sham a hollow charade orchestrated by a man devoid of conscience or remorse. As I sipped my coffee, my phone pinged with a text from my best friend, Jenna. I heard about Briar and Elliot. Are you okay? I grimaced, suddenly acutely aware of how quickly news traveled in our small town. No doubt Elliot had been spinning his version of events, painting me as the jilted ex-fiancé, bitter and unhinged. I'm fine, I lied, not ready to divulge the full extent of Briar's treachery, just a bit shocked is all. Jenna didn't buy it for a second. Come on, Ava, it's me. Talk to me. I swallowed hard, my throat tight with anguish. It's not just that they're engaged. Briar's pregnant, too. There was a long pause before Jenna's reply came through. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. The tears I had been holding back finally spilled over, hot and shameful. 
I don't know what to do, Jen. How could she do this to me, with him of all people? That's just... Wow. Jenna struggled to find the right words. I mean, I know Briar has always been a little wild, but this is a whole new level of messed up. I let out a hollow laugh, grateful for Jenna's unwavering support even in the face of my family's dysfunction. Well, you know what they say. The truth comes out eventually, she continued. If Elliot really is the lying scumbag we all think he is, it'll catch up to him sooner or later. Her words resonated deep within me, fanning the smoldering embers of determination that had ignited the previous night. She was right. The truth couldn't stay buried forever. And when it finally surfaced, I would be ready. You're right, Jen, I said, my voice hardening with resolve. He's not going to get away with this. Not this time. There was a pause as Jenna processed the shift in my tone. Ava, what are you planning? A grim smile tugged at the corners of my mouth. Don't worry about it. Just know that before this is over, Elliot Grayson is going to get exactly what he deserves. I disconnected the call, my hands already in motion. If there was one thing I had learned from my ill-fated relationship with Elliot, it was how to unravel the tangled webs of lies and deceit. And this time, I held the thread that would unwind his entire world. With renewed determination, I set out to uncover the truth about Elliot's misdeeds. If he thought he could waltz back into my life and trample all over me again, he had another thing coming. My first stop was the county clerk's office to request copies of Elliot's real estate records. As a licensed agent, he was required to file detailed reports on every transaction, a veritable treasure trove of information, if one knew where to look. Knock, knock, a voice called out as the office door swung open. Speak of the devil. Elliot strode in, trademark smirk plastered across his face as he made a beeline for the clerk's desk. I shrank back praying he wouldn't notice me lurking in the corner. Morning, Janice. He oozed in that fake, syrupy tone that used to make my skin crawl. I've got a new listing I need to get filed A.S. a peep. Janice, the matronly clerk, instantly morphed into a simpering fool at Elliot's very presence. Of course, Mr. Grayson. Anything for our top seller. I fought back a wave of nausea as they exchanged hushed burrs, no doubt greasing the wheels of another one of Elliot's shady deals. This was the same man who had sworn eternal love and fidelity to me, with that same honeyed tongue now spewing lies and empty flattery. As if sensing my eyes boring into him, Elliot glanced up and froze. Our gazes locked, and I saw the briefest flicker of panic in those cold serpentine eyes before his expression settled into its usual arrogant mask. Well, well. He slithered toward me, that infuriating smirk back in place. If it isn't my favorite ex fiance to what do I owe this pleasure, Avalon? I opened my mouth to respond, but he barreled on, not giving me a chance to speak. No, wait. Let me guess. You're here to dig up dirt on me, aren't you? He skied, shaking his head in mock disappointment. Still can't get over the fact that I chose your sister over you? Face it, babe. Briar's younger, hotter, and not quite as uptight as you white-hot fury lanced through me at his callous words. Before I could stop myself, my hand flew up, cracking across his smug face in a resounding slap. Elliot recoiled, clutching his reddened cheek as shock and rage warred on his features. You crazy b Save it, I spat, cutting off whatever vile insult was about to tumble from his forked tongue. I know exactly what you are, Elliot, a lying, manipulative snake, and I'm going to make sure everyone else knows it, too. Something dark flickered in his eyes, a brief glimpse of the monster lurking beneath that polished facade. For a heartbeat, I was almost afraid, afraid of what this soulless creature was capable of. But the moment passed, and that too familiar sneer twisted his lips. Is that so? Well, good luck with that, sweetheart. You've got nothing on me. We'll see about that. I matched his glare, refusing to be intimidated. Your house of cards is about to come crashing down, Elliot. And when it does, you're going to have a lot more to worry about than keeping your dirty laundry hidden. With that parting shot, I whirled on my heel and stormed out, the thrill of battle singing through my veins. Let the games begin. In the days following my confrontation with Elliot at the clerk's office, I pored over the records I had requested, meticulously cataloging every shady deal, every suspicious transaction. The more I uncovered, the more a sinister pattern began to emerge a tangled web of fraud, kickbacks, and blatant disregard for ethics or legality. 
Just when I began to feel overwhelmed by the sheer scope of Elliot's misdeeds, an unexpected ally fell into my lap. Avalon Foster? I glanced up to find a tall, broad-shouldered man looming over my table at the local diner. He looked vaguely familiar, but I couldn't quite place him. Yes. Dean Harris, he said, extending a calloused hand. I used to work with that scumbag Elliot Grayson. Recognition sparked in my mind. Dean had been one of Elliot's colleagues at the real estate firm before abruptly leaving under mysterious circumstances a few years back. The rumor mill had been rife with speculation, but the details were never quite clear. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation the other day at the clerk's office, Dean continued, sliding into the booth across from me. You're not the only one with a bone to pick against that weasel. I arched a skeptical brow, clutching my paperwork a bit tighter. For all I knew, this guy could just be another one of Elliot's goons, trying to throw me off the trail. As if reading my thoughts, Dean's expression softened. Look, I know we don't know each other, but I was where you are now a few years ago, digging into the sleazebag's business dealings, trying to find proof of all the shady crap he was pulling behind the scenes. He leaned forward, his gaze intense. Only difference is, Elliot caught wind of what I was up to and made sure to bury me before I could take him down with me. The bitterness in his voice resonated deep within me, the righteous fury of someone who had been grievously wronged, much like myself. Why should I trust you? I challenged. For all I know, you could just be looking to cash in on whatever I uncover. Dean's jaw tightened, and for a moment I thought I might have pushed him too far. But then that hard edge in his expression softened into something akin to regret. Because I know what it's like to have that snake turn his venom on you, he said quietly. To have your life, your career, your reputation ripped out from under you while he slithers away unscathed, laughing at the rubble he left behind. His words struck a chord, dredging up the all-too-familiar anguish of Elliot's betrayal. The lies, the gaslighting, the sick feeling of being made to doubt my own reality, it was all there in Dean's haunted gaze. This man understood my pain on a primal level, and in that moment I knew he was telling the truth. Decision made, I slid the stack of paperwork across the table toward him. Take a look at this and tell me what you think. Dean's brows shot up as he flipped through the damning records, a low whistle escaping his lips. Son of a bitch, you really did your homework. A grim smile tugged at the corners of my mouth. That's just the tip of the iceberg. He looked up at me then, newfound respect glinting in those steely eyes. Okay, Foster, you've got my attention, so what's the plan? My grin widened, feral and vindictive and oh-so-satisfying. The way I see it, we've both got a score to settle with Elliot Grayson. I leaned forward, bracing my elbows on the table. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty damn motivated to make that snake pay for his crimes. Dean matched my feral grin with one of his own. I'm listening. With Dean on board, our mission to take down Elliot Grayson kicked into high gear. We spent countless hours poring over financial records, cross-checking receipts and bank statements, building an airtight case against the slimy bastard. As the evidence mounted, so too did the threats. It started small, a flat tire here, a broken window there, petty acts of vandalism that could easily be dismissed as random occurrences in a small town. But I knew better. This is just his way of trying to rattle us, Dean growled one evening as we surveyed the latest round of damage to his truck. Typical Elliot, too much of a coward to face us head on. I nodded grimly, my grip tightening around the crowbar I had grabbed for self-defense. He's getting desperate. That means we're getting close. A dark chuckle rumbled from Dean's chest. You scared, Foster? I shot him a withering glare. You wish? The corners of his mouth quirked up in a begrudging grin. That's what I like to hear. Despite the bravado, I'll admit a tendril of unease had started to slither its way into the pit of my stomach. Just how far was Elliot willing to go to protect his precious house of lies? The answer came a few nights later in the form of a, a chilling reminder. I was locking up the school after tutoring when a faint noise from the hallway gave me pause. Grabbing the baseball bat I kept in my desk for safety, I crept toward the source of the sound and felt my blood run cold. There, crudely scrawled across the lockers in vivid crimson, was a single word, Stop. Below it, like a signature of sick promises yet to come, 
was sprayed the unmistakable symbol of Elliot's real estate firm, a serpent coiled around a bright red apple, its fangs bared in a menacing hiss. The hairs on the back of my neck prickled as the weight of that wordless threat settled over me like a shroud. This was no longer a battle fought with harsh words and petty acts of retaliation. This was war. I fumbled for my phone with a trembling hand, my fingers already pulling up Dean's number. He answered on the first ring, his voice taut with the same cold dread that had seized my own body. You've seen it too, I take it? I swallowed hard, nodding despite knowing he couldn't see the gesture over the phone. Yeah, at the school. Same here, some punks tagged the side of my building with that same creepy-ass snake symbol. There was a pause, then Dean's tone sharpened with grim resolve. Okay, that's it. We're done playing nice with this piece of garbage. You know I'm in. I said, my own resolve hardening to steel in the face of Elliot's escalating intimidation tactics. It's time to shove all this back in his smug face and put an end to his reign of terror once and for all. My thoughts exactly. The hard edge in Dean's voice sent an anticipatory thrill zinging through me. I'll make the arrangements. We do this my way, no more pulling punches. It's all or nothing from here on out. You ready for this, Foster? My fingers closed around the baseball bat with a grim smile. Born ready. The battle lines had been drawn and there was no turning back now. One way or another, this would all be over soon. Elliot Grayson was going down. And this time, he was taking the rest of us with him. The night of Elliot and Briar's engagement party arrived with the kind of electric tension that crackles in the air before a thunderstorm. Dean and I had spent weeks meticulously laying the groundwork, biding our time until the perfect moment to unleash our vengeance. As the guests began to trickle in, I could feel their curious eyes tracking my every move. No doubt the town gossips had been working overtime, spinning wild tales about the jilted ex fiancee crashing her sister's celebration. Little did they know, this was no mere act of jealousy or spite. This was retribution, long overdue. "'You sure you want to go through with this?' Dean murmured, falling into step beside me as we surveyed the gathering crowd. "'Still a chance to back out. No hard feelings.' His words barely registered. My focus was locked on the sleek black escalade that had just pulled up to the curb. Elliot stepped out first resplendent in an Armani suit that likely cost more than my annual salary, with Briar hanging off his arm like a designer accessory. My lip curled in disgust at the picture of smug affluence they made. How many innocent lives had Elliot ruined to maintain that polished facade? How many hard-working folks had he cheated and manipulated out of their life savings, all to feed his ravenous greed? Not any more. Tonight, the truth would finally see the light. No backing out, I said low and deadly. It's time to burn this whole thing to the ground. Dean's gaze sharpened, a predatory glint in his eye. You got it, boss. With a silent nod, we split off, Dean to make the final preparations while I slipped through the crowd to get into position. My heart thundered in my chest, an intoxicating cocktail of nerves and vindictive glee coursing through my veins. Showtime. The opening chords of the wedding march rang out, drawing everyone's attention to the grand staircase where Elliot and Briar had positioned themselves, beaming and waving to their adoring fans like they were celebrities on the red carpet. My stomach turned. These people were so blissfully blind to the monster they were celebrating. But not for long. If I could have everyone's attention! Elliot's voice boomed out, instantly commanding the room. I tensed, gripping the remote control in my pocket as he cleared his throat with a smug flourish. Before we get this party started, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you all for being here tonight. As he launched into his self-aggrandizing spiel, I felt Dean's eyes boring into me from across the room. A fleeting nod was all the signal I needed. Showtime. With a sharp jab of my thumb, I punched the button on the remote, unleashing a wave of chaos. All at once, every display screen and video monitor in the room flickered to life bathing the stunned guests in a rapid-fire deluge of images and documents, bank statements highlighting six-figure wire transfers, email threads explicitly detailing kickback schemes and backroom deals, video recordings of intimate encounters, the unmistakable evidence of Elliot's innumerable infidelities.
and hovering above it all, a damning slideshow of real estate records meticulously cataloging every fraudulent transaction, every illegally skimmed commission, every money laundering scheme Elliot had so carefully buried over the years. The silence was deafening as the horrified partygoers processed the mountain of incriminating evidence laid bare before them. And then, like a tidal wave, the screaming began. What is this? Oh my God! You lying son of a bitch! Elliot and Briar stood frozen in terror. All the color drained from their faces as the world they'd so carefully constructed came crashing down in brilliant high definition around them. In that moment, time itself seemed to grind to a halt as every soul in that room turned to me. I could pinpoint the exact second when Elliot's eyes met mine. Could see the pure, unbridled hatred blazing in those serpentine depths as the horrible truth crystallized. I had won. With a feral smile, I raised my champagne glass in a mocking toast to the disgraced couple. To the happy couple, I purred, reveling in Elliot's impotent rage. May your love burn as bright as the trail of lies you left in your wake. The aftermath of our grand exposure played out like a waking nightmare for Elliot and Briar Grayson. As the disbelieving partygoers fled the scene in droves, the authorities swept in to arrest Elliot on a dizzying array of charges. Fraud, money laundering, tax evasion— the list went on and on. By the end of the night, the so-called golden boy of our town's real estate scene found himself in handcuffs, hauled off to a cell to await his fate. Briar, poor deluded Briar, could only watch in stunned horror as the life she thought she knew imploded around her. The whispers and stares followed her every move as the ugly truth about her fiancé's misdeeds made its rounds. For my part, I felt oddly empty. The sweet taste of long-awaited vengeance had quickly soured, leaving behind a hollowness I couldn't quite explain. Was this really what I had fought so hard for? This emptiness? It wasn't until a few days later, as I sat grading papers in my empty classroom, that the answer came striding through the door. You must be pretty proud of yourself. I glanced up to find Briar looming over me, her face pale and drawn. She looked like a ghost of the vivacious young woman I had once known, haunted, shattered, by the devastating turn her life had taken. Part of me wanted to feel sorry for her. But the memory of her cruel words, her callous betrayal, quickly smothered any flickers of sympathy. "'I did what I had to do,' I said, keeping my tone carefully neutral. Elliot got exactly what was coming to him. Briar's eyes flashed with impotent anger. "'You ruined everything, our whole lives, just destroyed.' because you couldn't let go of some petty jealousy. My grip tightened on my pen as that all-too-familiar spark of fury ignited within me. Petty jealousy? Are you kidding me right now? I shot to my feet, slamming my palms on the desk as I glared at my so-called sister. That man was a lying, manipulative monster who destroyed people's lives without a second thought. He cheated on me, he sabotaged Dean's career, and who knows how many other innocent people he screwed over to feed his greed. Briar opened her mouth, but I wasn't finished. And you, I jabbed an accusing finger at her. My own sister, someone I thought I could trust. You let that snake slither into your life and poison your mind against me. He played you for a fool, Briar, just like he played all of us. Her bottom lip trembled, the fight visibly draining from her as the weight of my words hit home. For the briefest moment, I thought I saw a glimmer of the old Briar resurfacing, a fleeting glimpse of the kind, loving sister I had once known. But it was gone in an instant, replaced by the same hollow emptiness reflected in her sunken eyes. "'You're right,' she whispered, her voice cracking with a pain so profound it lanced straight through my heart. I was a fool. Worse than that, I was just as bad as him in the end. I opened my mouth to respond, to offer some measure of comfort or absolution— but Briar had already turned away, shoulders slumped in defeat as she trudged from the room. And just like that, the fire that had sustained me through this long, bitter ordeal flickered and died, leaving behind a hollow husk of ashes and regret. In the weeks following Elliot's spectacular downfall, a strange sense of normalcy began to settle over my life once again. The whispers and pointed stares gradually faded, replaced by a newfound respect from those who had once doubted me. It seemed the entire town had gotten a harsh wake-up call about the true cost of turning a blind eye to injustice. They had seen firsthand how one man's unchecked greed and depravity 
could infect and corrode even the closest of bonds. For the first time in over a year I could walk down the street without feeling the weight of judgment pressing down on me. Jaded glances had given way to warm smiles and friendly waves, a silent acknowledgment that I had been wronged, and an apology for not believing me sooner. It was a heady, almost dizzying feeling, like a veil had been lifted and I could finally breathe again without the specter of Elliot Grayson's lies looming over me. Of course, not everyone in town was quite so forgiving. Just couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? The familiar sneer made the hairs on the back of my neck prickle. I turned to find Briar leaning against the door frame of my classroom, arms crossed over her swollen belly. Her expression was a study in bitter resentment, her pretty features twisted into an all-too-familiar mask of disdain. So much for a fresh start. What do you want, Briar? I sighed, already feeling that brief respite of peace slipping away. I just— she trailed off, worrying her lower lip in a rare moment of unguarded vulnerability. When she spoke again, her voice was quieter, stripped of its usual venom. I wanted to thank you, I guess. I blinked, caught off guard by the unexpected sincerity in her tone. Thank me? For what? Briar's gaze slid away, her arms tightening around herself. For showing me the truth. As much as it hurt, as much as I hate you for destroying my life, you did me a favor by ripping off the blinders, you know? My brow furrowed, and some long-buried thread of sisterly compassion tugged at my heart. I didn't want to hurt you, Briar. I just... Couldn't let him get away with it, she finished with a hollow laugh. Yeah, I know, self-righteous to the end, right? The old sting of her bitterness lanced through me, but I forced it down. Getting drawn into another vicious sniping match would only lead us down the same destructive path. Drawing a steadying breath, I met her gaze levelly. I did what I had to do to stop a predator from hurting more innocent people, the fact that you were one of his victims, too. I trailed off with a helpless shrug. I never wanted that for you. Briar's defiant mask slipped for just a moment, revealing a glimpse of the lost, wounded young woman beneath. A few beats passed in tense silence before she finally gave a curt nod. For what it's worth, I believe you. She hesitated, chewing her lip again. If you're, you know— Looking to make a fresh start or whatever, I could use some help getting back on my feet. Fresh start. The words sparked something warm and tentative in my chest, the faint flicker of hope that had been smothered for far too long. A wry smile tugged at my lips as I regarded my sister, my guilt, and the fractured bond stretching between us. It was more than either of us deserved, perhaps. But it was also a chance, a single, fragile thread to cling to as we each untangled ourselves from the wreckage of our lives. You know what? I said, my smile widening into something more genuine. I think I'd like that. Briar's own lips curved in a tentative mirror of my expression. It wasn't much, a simple shared moment of understanding between two souls, irrevocably scarred. But it was enough to ignite that sputtering flame of hope into a steady burn. Whatever came next, we would face it together. As sisters, united against the storms that had once threatened to tear us apart. It was a new beginning, fragile and imperfect, but a beginning nonetheless.